Hi everyone. Welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel and I am a draftsman and today I'm talking to you about the eighth of Dennis Dutton's cluster criteria for art. I'm going to read the corresponding excerpt and then I will muse about it a little bit. If you'd like to support my audiovisual channel, you can do so by liking and sharing this video and also by subscribing. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to support what I do with money, that is also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is GabriellaHandle.com, just one word, first name, last name. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay, buy prints of my drawings, or you can leave me a tip. The links for all of these things will be in the captioned video description. Thank you for your time, and let's go ahead. Uh, all right. So, this is the book out of which I read the excerpts of the Cluster Criteria for Art, The Art Instinct by Dennis Dutton. Dennis, by the way, is spelled with one N. I think in the first few I... Ninth. Ninth Cluster Criteria, not eighth. Uh, yeah, I think in the first, you can just edit it, but like the first few videos have like Dennis spelled with two N's. Or like the thumbnail that I made. I'm not going to change the whole thing, I don't think. Anyway, let's review real quick the criteria. Number nine, by the way, I, it was nine, not eight, is emotional saturation. But let's review them. Number one is direct pleasure. Number two, skill and virtuosity. Number three, style. Number four, novelty and creativity. <clears throat> Number five, criticism. Number six, representation. Number seven, special focus. Number eight, expressive individuality. Number nine, emotional saturation. Number 10, intellectual challenge. Number 11, art traditions and institutions. Number 12, imaginative experience. Okay, so number nine, let's read that. Quote, emotional saturation. In varying degrees, the experience of works of art is shot through with emotion. Emotion and art divides broadly into two kinds, fused, in parenthesis, or confused, in parenthesis, in experience but analytically distinct, First are the emotions provoked or incited by the represented content of art, the pathos of a scene portrayed in a painting, a comic sequence in a play, a vision of death in a poem. These are normal emotions of life, and as such, are the subject of cross-cultural psychological research outside of aesthetics. Open parenthesis, one taxonomy currently is used in empirical psychology names one, tax one taxonomy currently used in empirical psychology names seven basic emotion types. Fear, joy, sadness, anger, disgust, contempt, and surprise. Close parenthesis. There is a second, alternative sense, however, in which emotions are encountered in art. Works of art can be pervaded by a distinct emotional flavor or tone that is different from emotions caused by represented content. This second kind of embodied or expressed emotion is connected to the first, but not necessarily governed by it. It is the emotional tone we might feel in a Chekhov story or a Brahms symphony. It is not generic, a type of emotion, but usually described as unique to the work. The work's emotional contour, its emotional perspective to cite two common metaphors. In parenthesis, Obviously, many ordinary non-art life experiences, falling in love, watching a child take its first steps, listening to an elegy, seeing an athlete break a world record, having a heated row with a close friend, viewing the grandeur of nature, are also imbued with emotion. End parenthesis and also end quote. Alright. I am confusion. Um... I guess that's the first kind of emotion that he said 
one has when experiencing art. Okay, the first one is fused. And the second kind doesn't have like a name to it. Um, however, the first one seems to be about that which is portrayed in the work of art, and that is similar to actually representation. Um, right, in representation, which is the sixth criteria, he talks about appreciating that which is represented in the work of art versus how it's represented, meaning like, you know, the technique or, you know, if it's painterly or um, sketchy lines or really refined curves and this type of stuff. But, yes, in that one he talks about the subject matter. And so here in Emotional Saturation, he also talks about subject matter conjuring an emotion in the viewer. And how works of art can summon these emotions in the viewer. And it, I guess it reminds me of what my, what my, I've had uh, guests in my podcast uh, conversation about art a few times say that if the object of art, you know, that if that upon which you gaze in, you know, causes an emotion, any emotion, then it's a work of art. Um, so here, um, he says that currently the emotions, basic emotion, ba seven basic emotion types are fear, joy, sadness, anger, disgust, contempt, and surprise. Most of them seem negative. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Because I have a hard time, I mean, I guess, I, even, even thinking of subject matter, I have a hard time thinking that subject matter of works of art would inspire <clears throat> so much negative emotion. Um, I guess I don't know, there would have to be like a tally, I guess, of subject matters and what subject matter is represented the most, like, because, you know, older work is religious, and, you know, mythological, which is religion of its time. Um, and it's... A lot of those myths are just about death and carnage and terrible things like rape or whatever. Um, but... Yeah, I guess, I'm not sure. Um, Alright, just give me a minute. I mean, there's obviously nothing wrong with negative emotion. I'm just saying, in this count of emotions, it's like joy, I mean, a surprise positive? It can be. Surprise is like 50-50 positive, say. 50% positive, 50% 50% negative. But then the other ones, fear, sadness, anger, disgust, contempt, and 50% of surprise are bad. Or, you know, not just negative. Although, I suppose they can all have, like, their own degree of positivity. But whatever, if, I mean, if I'm, I'm think, trying to think about <clears throat> when one looks at art. So, is he saying this is the, these are the emotions summoned by the subject matter of the work and the viewer? Is that what he means? Alright, I'm going to try to think about the second part. I feel like 
like there's a similar dissertion here to representation where he's talking, where like again, he talks about the subject matter within the picture plane and how it's represented, but I don't, I can't say that I understand uh, this particular criteria. Um, like, I don't read these prior, even though, you know, I read this part already, but I can't say that, that I remember, I remembered what he talked about in this section, and then I don't, like, review it before filming, uh, recording. So, this is, it, I mean, it's, it's really not, it's not what I expected, you know, I, if you tell me emotional saturation, um, I was thinking rather of, you know, when somebody looks at Sergeant Snedem X and they're just like amazed, for example. Or when somebody looks at the Pietà and they start crying, or something like that. But then there's there isn't the subject matter versus how the subject matter is conveyed like relationship here like I don't understand the second part that he's talking about um, the words emotional contour its emotional perspective to cite two common metaphors I don't understand I mean, I kind of feel as though the work of art kind of has, I mean, a, a, according, I mean, from what I'm under, trying to understand, that the work of art maybe kind of has a personality in a way, or something. Like, I mean, with the, uh, with the work's emotional contour, its emotional perspective, I mean, both of which have to be interpreted interpreted by the viewer I wish you would have cited more metaphors because I'm not I don't understand So if in representation you have that which is represented versus the way it's depicted. And here you have, again, that which is represented versus... what? Because I guess, um, I guess I wonder whether the emotion is... and that's also some, pe some people have mused about in my podcast, in a conversation about art about how, like, when we talk about beauty, I think Alana Benham, I don't remember her episode number, but she said that we kind of ascribe beauty to something. And beauty is not in the object by default. Mm, kind of meaning that we assign the beauty to the object instead of the object exuding the beauty at us or something. So I kind of think there's something of the latter there, meaning that in this case the emotion is like emitted by the work of art to the viewer. Um, but I'm not sure by what means Dutton mean is referring to. Um, because, you know, he just says the, con the contour of emotion of the work 
or was its emotional perspective. I don't understand if he means just by the appearance of it, you know, the way that the subject matter is depicted, the color palette, I mean, all of those things combined, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I suppose he also says here, it is not generic, it's not a type of emotion, but usually described as unique to the work, um, as if maybe the works of art also have their own categories, their own taxonomy of emotion, like, you know, the fear, joy, whatever that um, is mentioned earlier. I'm not sure, and I'm not gonna try to like like sit here and divine what you know. Um, maybe you can tell me what you think this means because I don't understand, or I don't entirely understand, or I understand part of it. I don't know. I'm not sure. I find this criteria in particular confusing. Um, I also am not sure in terms of like what I thought this part would be. I don't know if a work of art necessarily has to like overwhelm the viewer with emotion necessarily in order for that object of art to be a work of art. I don't know if that is strictly necessary. Um, because not, I don't, because, I mean, I don't think not, I don't think all contemplation of art or of beauty has to be, like, really high-pitched emotion that is just, like, overwhelming that you, you start crying or, you know, sometimes when I'm looking at trees or at flowers or at my work, it's very quiet and thoughtful enjoyment. You know, where I'm just sitting and looking at the thing and like appreciating it and kind of enjoying the characteristics, the color, the detail, you know, the surface. If I, if it's a flower and I touch it, I'm like, oh my god, you're so soft. Like something like that, you know. Um, so I don't think beauty or art has to make me cry or piss me off in order for me to consider it beautiful or a work of art or both. Um, to I don't know, refer a little bit to what I understand for, um, what I was thinking for emotional saturation. Um, yes. I need help with this one because I don't get it. Or, you know, maybe I'll reprise someday and do a series again when I get it. <laughs> when I get all of these in the way that he meant it or something, or if I have better understanding. Anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there. emotional tone we might feel in a Chekhov story or a Brahms symphony. It is not generic, a type of emotion, but usually described unique as unique to the work. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. Please help. Send help. Um, yes. Thank you very much for tolerating the long silences um, because I am I have no intention of editing them out. Um, yes. Please tell me what you think. Please tell me if you understand. Remember to like and share this video. And links for... Uh, I have been adding the, a link to the playlist. Um, I should do it on all the videos, but a, a playlist of this series, you know, the Dennis Dutton Criteria for Art. And uh, I thought that was cool that I thought of that, and I think it's a good idea. 
and well, let me know if it is. If you think it's stupid, well, I think I'm going to do it anyway. Um, yes. Thank you very much for watching and have a fantastic day.